inverse Laplace transforms. We know Laplace transforms. Now we are going to find the inverse Laplace transform of a function. So first we will recall once what is Laplace transform of a function. So Laplace transform of f of t is, we know, we write that one like uh, L of f of t equal to function of s. Laplace transform of f of t is f bar of s. Now, inverse Laplace transform inverse Laplace transform of f bar of s is denoted like this. L inverse of f bar of s equal to f of t. Simply I took L to right side. L inverse of f bar of s equal to f of t. So now from this you can understand inverse Laplace is nothing. The name itself says it is reverse. Laplace transform of function of t will get in function of s. Now we are going to apply inverse Laplace transform for function of s. We are going to get this one, f of t. So whatever we did now, till now, we are going to do quite opposite, reverse, inverse manner. What I am saying, you know, Laplace transform of t is 1 by s square. In inverse, L inverse of 1 by s square is t. Quite opposite. L of t power n, you know, L of t power n is n factorial by s power n plus 1. Coming to inverse, L inverse of 1 by s power n plus 1. Any constant we will send to this side. t power n by n factorial. Similarly, you know L of e power a t, L of e power a t is 1 by s minus a. L inverse of 1 by s minus a is e power a t. L of sin a t we know. What is L of sin a t? a by a square plus a square. You can send constant to this side. That is L inverse of 1 by a square plus a square is 1 by a sin a t. L of cos a t we know. S by a square plus a square. L inverse of S by S square plus A square equal to cos A T. Like this, one can easily find out inverse Laplace transforms if you know Laplace. So this is the way we are going to evaluate inverse Laplace. These are Laplace formulas. These are inverse Laplace. Simply what we can say, what we did till now, we are going to do in reverse. If you have clear idea about Laplace, you can easily understand what is inverse Laplace. You can easily evaluate inverse Laplace transform problems also. Are you clear? So first accepting theorem in inverse Laplace transforms. So, inverse Laplace transforms uh, first shifting theorem, like Laplace transform first shifting theorem, we are going to discuss. So, first once we call what is first shifting theorem in Laplace. We apply first shifting theorem in Laplace transform whenever e power a t is in product. If e power a t is in product, what we are going to do, L of e power a t, Laplace I am writing first. In Laplace we know, in Laplace you have like this, L of e power a t 
the above T if you have, we are going to find the Laplace transform for f of t and uh, we can replace s by s minus a if you have a. If you have minus a there, you are going to replace s by s plus a. So this is first shifting term in Laplace. If e power a t is in product, replace s by s minus a. If e power minus a t is in product, replace s by s plus a. But coming to here, in inverse Laplace, what is first shifting here? Quite opposite to that. If you have e power a t in product, you are going to replace s by s minus a. If you have e power minus a t in product, you are going to replace s by s plus a. Now, the quite, quite opposite to that uh, Laplace transform for shifting term inverse Laplace. L inverse of f bar of s minus a equal to e power a t into L inverse of f bar of s. What we did actually here, see, we replace s minus a by s. If you want, you can observe. So if you replace s minus a by s, then you can write e power a t in product. That if we have e power a t in product, replace s by s minus a. Now here, if you have e power a t in product, write in the place of s minus a, yes. Or, if you have plus a, then write e power minus a t in product. So if you want to replace s plus a by s, write e power minus a t in product. If you want to replace s minus a by s, write e power a t in product. But you may get one doubt, what is the need of replacing s minus a by s? You can understand that one through one example, why we are replacing s minus a with s or s plus a with s. See here. For example, if you have a situation like this, you need to evaluate L inverse of 1 by S minus 2 whole square. To evaluate this, if you see this one, immediately we get into your mind this formula. We have one formula, this formula you will get in your mind, that is L inverse of 1 by s square is t. This formula you get into your mind. If you have here s square, you can use this formula. In the place of s minus 2, if you write s, you can use that one directly. So what is the difficulty to apply this formula here? We don't have s in the place of s minus 2. What first shifting theorem says, replace s minus a by s if you want, but don't forget to write e power a t in product. So now I am doing, I am replacing s minus 2 by s to get to apply that formula. So L inverse of 1 by s square. What I did, I replace s minus 2 by s. When you replace s minus 2 by s, simply write e power a t in product. Here a is 2. Here a is 2. So this one we are going to use. e power 2t you need to keep in product. Then what is L inverse of 1 by s square? That is very clear. t. So this is L inverse of 1 by s minus 2 whole square value. Whenever if you want to replace s minus a by s, you can. If you want to replace s plus a by s, you can. That's what first shifting theorem says. We will see one more example. For example, if you are evaluating this one, L inverse of 1 by 
2 s square plus 2 s plus 10 is there. Whenever if you have a second degree equation in the denominator, generally we prefer positive theorem. When we can apply positive theorem, if you can write this one in a plus b whole square form. a plus b whole square form means like this. 1 by a square, this is a square. Plus 2ab, 2 into a is there. But here luckily we have 2. By which number if you multiply 2, you will get 2. We know. With 1 only. 2, 1, 2. That 1 becomes b. Now we need b square. a square plus 2ab plus b square plus 1 square. Already we have here 10. We added 1. What is left over? 10 minus 1. 9 is left over. This is b square. How we can write this? We can write this in this model. We know a square plus 2ab plus b square is a plus b whole square 1 by s plus 1 whole square. That 9 can be written as 3 square. Again recall one formula in inverse Laplace transform which we know very well. L inverse of 1 by S square plus A square is 1 by A sine AD. That formula we know. 1 by A sine AD formula. So to apply this formula, we don't have S here. We have S plus 1. So if you can replace s plus 1 by s, then you can easily apply first shifting theorem. So what first shifting theorem? You can easily apply this formula, not first shifting theorem. What first shifting theorem says? If you want to replace s plus a with s, you can. But don't forget to write e power minus a in product. So what I am saying? Write in the place of s plus 1, yes. But don't forget to write e power minus t in product because here a is 1. So this formula you need to apply. e power minus t into a is 3 here. a is 3. 1 by 3 sin 3t. So like this very easily we can uh, use first shifting theorem. We will discuss one more example. You can understand very clearly what is first shifting theorem in inverse lab class. So coming to the third one, L inverse of S by S square plus 4S plus 13 kilo. So similarly how we did a previous example, how we did previous example like that only we are going to do this one by converting denominator in A plus B whole square form like this. L inverse of S by A square plus 2AB plus B square left over. What I am saying? This is A square 2A. By which number if you multiply 2, you will get 4. You have to multiply with 2. 2 twos are 4. So this will be B. This will be B square. 2 square you added. 4 you added. Already what number you are having here? 13. In 13 already you added 4. 13 minus 4 is left over. That 9 you need to add. So now this can be written like this. L inverse of S by S plus 2 whole square. That 9 can be written as 3 square. In previous cases we don't have S in numerator. So we won't bother about numerator in the previous cases. But now you have S. If you want to replace S plus 2 by S to apply that cos formula, this formula. L inverse of S by S square plus A square cos A D. To apply this formula, you need to replace S plus 2 by S. But if you have S in numerator, 
you need to consider the test also. That means you need to make this S also S plus 2. If you want to replace S plus 2 by S, wherever you are having S, there you need to make that one as S plus 2. So to make S as S plus 2, simply add 2 and subtract 2. Now you can replace S plus 2 by S if you have in numerator S. If you don't have, don't bother about that. So now, replace S plus 2 by S. If you replace S plus 2 by S, what percept in theorem says? K P power minus 2 K in product. L inverse of S minus 2 by S square plus 3 square. Now split this one. L inverse of S by S square plus 3 square minus 2 into L inverse of 1 by S square plus 3 square. L inverse of s by s square plus a square cos a t. So this becomes cos a t. L inverse of 1 by s square plus a square, we know. L inverse of 1 by s square plus a square is 1 by a sin a t. So this formula we are writing here, a is 3. 1 by 3 sin 3 t. So like this, one can easily evaluate any first theorem in inverse Laplace transform. Any doubts you may express.